Now let's talk, shall we? Let's move on and talk BB Stockholm. Uh, you'll all be familiar with what this is, right? It is the barge which is holding asylum seekers. Well, a Labour MP now, uh, Nadia Whittam, she has been over there. Uh, she's complaining that the Tories won't let her on board. She wonders what on earth they're hiding. So she's been interviewing, uh, talking to the so-called residents aboard. Let's have a little listen. I'm back in Parliament after meeting with residents of the Bibby Stock home. Their testimony was emotional and harrowing. The men I met said it felt like living in a prison. I mean, give me a break. She's the new Kate Aidy. There she is. She's been into the danger zone. She... And uh, actually, there are two things here. I think she does, as a Member of Parliament, I think she's right, that she should be allowed onto the, uh, the vessel and have a look because... It's proper that uh, these things, there be some form of scrutiny. Do you? Yeah, so, I do, so, so, I do, so, I do. So but... 650 MPs all decided they wanted to have a little gander. You'd let them all on board in the interest of scrutiny. It's not a tourist destination. But that's not happening, is it? But this is uh, an MP saying, I want to go on there. I think she should be allowed on. Um, uh, and uh, it's silly not to let her on, because she's an elected member of Parliament. However, uh, should conditions be better? Well, you know, should they be put in the Dorchester? Should they be given smoked salmon, silk pyjamas? Or should they be given don't give them conditions ideas. that are all right but not so great because uh, you don't really want to become a magnet to attract more, uh, more asylum seekers? Uh, I probably tend to that latter view. So you think it's fine as it is, basically? Well, I haven't been on board, so I issue that uh, caveat. I haven't I've seen, seen it myself, the pictures. I am not... My heart is not bleeding for those guys. Kevin? Uh, what are you asking me? Well, what I'm asking you, I'll cut, I'll cut <laughs> Sounds straight. Like a suspect. I'll cut straight to the chase, right? I'll cut straight to the yeah. chase. The problem is, I feel so strongly about this that if I'm not careful, me just on my own, I could fill the whole rest of the program ranting about this. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to hold myself what, in. What annoys what, you the most? Then I'll answer. That. I'll tell you what annoys me the most, right? There are people in this country that are absolutely desperate right now. I'll give you a tiny, small example. Last night on my way home from here, I drove ah, past I a guy. Yeah. I drove past a guy, right? It was on the floor in this kind of street, like a little gap on the street. It was snowing. It was absolutely freezing cold. The guy just had a, suit, uh, sleeping belt on, a sleeping bag on. Anyway, I got in touch with this charity, Street Link, they're called. Great service they do. You know, I respect all of them. Anyway, so when I see um, people like that on the streets of Britain, I feel heartbroken. Then, when I then cross to a group of people who have proactively made a choice to leave a safe country, which is France, lots of them just discard their uh, documents. They make it very difficult for their claims to be protest processed in a timely manner. They get given a safe, respectable, decent environment that actually tops a lot of the facilities that many of my viewers at home will have access to. They have prompt access to healthcare, they have uh, leisure facilities, they have mental health support, and they have lots of uh, support care wrapped around them. When you then have the audacity to use this as a political football and suggest that those people should somehow be likened to being prison inmates, I think it's damn right offensive to every single person that struggles in this country. I also think it's quite reflective of the fact that Labour, in my view, I would be concerned that the Labour Party would be prioritising the needs of those people that have made that proactive choice. And let's face it, they're probably a little bit disappointed because the reason that they've come is they've seen their mate on TikTok broadcasting their four-star hotel and they're a little bit gutted that they didn't get the same treatment. OK. <sighs> so, uh, where to start? Uh, I told you, I could yeah, keep yeah, going, yeah. but I work. So, I utterly reject the idea that the Labour... or the suggestion that the Labour Party would put the needs of people held in places <clears throat> like the, the, the Bibby in front of homeless people in our own country or people with their own needs. What's happened here, I agree that the prioritisation of this issue by her as a Member of Parliament, and there was a small number of MPs, six I think, that signed a letter recently alongside with a hundred organisations in this country asking for this facility to be shut down. I don't think, as a former Labour parliamentary candidate, party supporter, it should be shut down. I do want it to uh, do things properly and look after people. My observation of it is, so far, that it is doing that. I don't have a problem with people being searched there so that we know that there's not going to be attacks yep. uh, and, and weapons. That's fine. And I have a lot of uh, empathy for uh, and take very seriously people who are... And it's, a, it's the third most popular, most worrying 
an issue in this country, people, immigration and asylum. And that's absolutely right for people to be worried about it. But as Quentin said, th this MP here has chosen... She's, I think, the baby of the House. Yeah, she's I think she's chosen, about 23. Yeah, MPs do have this, this uh, right, in my opinion, to, to, to prioritise issues that they, they care about. Me, personally, where we are at this moment in time, I think there are... Ten other things that I think at least are more pressing, including homelessness, including law and order, including the decline of trust in our public institutions. But I would, and we would have a four-hour special, Michelle, if you use the actions of the baby of the house to suggest that the Labour Party are going to put asylum seekers and immigration seekers above others, because I reject that. There you go. Do you believe that rejection? It's a fair rejection. Does it wash with you guys at home? I just don't like this language, Quentin. When I hear people saying it's cruel, it's inhuman, what is cruel and inhumane about providing people who've chosen to come with a safe, decent place to be? And when somebody very tragically um, ended their life via suicide the other day, I actually was pretty sickened the way that that was immediately politicised because suicide is one of the biggest killers of men under the age of 50. Yes. Uh, yeah. Men kill themselves each and every single day. We don't know yeah. this person's circumstances. It's horrendous that he's chosen to end his life like that. You know, it's heartbreaking when anyone does it. But it was immediately jumped upon as these are awful conditions. This government is, you know, they're essentially murderers, some people would think, for pushing a guy to that kind of extent. It's politicising something and it infuriates me, the language around it. I agree, I agree with you. Uh, no idea where to... She was the baby of the house, I don't think she is anymore. Oh, yes. But she's uh, a young young woman who obviously feels strongly about this. I bet if she went onto the streets of Nottingham, her constituency, uh, I don't suppose her concerns would be widely shared. Do not. No. Because there are an awful lot of no, people... No, I don't, actually, I, that I don't would... think she would... I don't think she's speaking up for a constituency. The MPs don't always have to do that. They can sometimes go off on one that they feel strongly about personally. She obviously feels strongly about that. I think she's... I think she's daft about this. I think she's completely wrong. But, um, you know, it's her choice. Can I say one, one thing to add to this, which is that the shame of this is the fact that, in my view, she is naively... Uh, uh, made some comments there about you know, the, some of the things you said about safety and comfort, etc. The second half of what she said in that video talks about the backlogs, talks about the failure in processing, and makes some very fair points about the fact that the <clears> numbers <throat> of people coming over has gone up so much in recent years. And that's been lost. That's been entirely lost by the, uh, you know, the understandable in some ways reactions that folks like you have. How do you promptly process someone who's deliberately discarded their documents? Uh, well, uh, that there have to be. I mean, that's just an administration process. Well, so, right? so tell me then. So if you if you proactively, and we know that people do this, they proactively discard their identification documents, which by itself would ring an alarm bell with me. But anyway, if they choose to do that, which we know they do, you tell me, because everyone criticises the time taken to process these okay. people, which I agree is too wrong. If they've discarded their documents deliberately, how on earth right. do you even begin to process them? OK, well, the answer, Michelle, is that people have been discarding their documents and saying, I haven't got it on me since time eternal. And have you, they? Yes, they have. Of course, it's been up. No, I don't know. I'm not saying they have. No, they haven't. I'm saying have they? I don't it's know. It's kind of. What I, I would conclude that that's always been the case to make it harder for them to be assessed. But the reality is, you know, that the, the numbers of people uh, coming here is eight times higher under Conservative-led governments. Fact. OK? And people were always before stringing the authorities along because they wanted to try and, 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 you know, achieve an objective. It didn't start recently, OK? I take your point, it's not easy. Yeah, but... and I think to, be, to give Tories the credit, I mean, at the end of the day, there is so many, you know, global kind of upsets and wars and conflicts at the moment. The amount of people wanting to change location... And, by the way, I don't blame anyone who wouldn't want of to create course. a better life for themselves. I don't blame these individuals. But now you've got the document discarding, you've got these lawyers that are so smart now. You've got social media encouraging... It's TikTok's almost like a travel agent. Yeah, but it's... <laughs> no, it is. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I'm, no, not, you're... I'm not even joking. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a travel agent. That's why I just threw straight to you with a question, because once I get started on this, yeah, yeah. this topic... But that's I need also, to Michelle, that, that, that is why, if you make things not entirely uncomfortable, but if you, if you make them... Uh, you know, a little bit Spartan, then the message might go out via TikTok, uh, lads, 
maybe this isn't such a great place to come to afterwards. Honestly, after I, I just feel, I know, my, lots of my viewers will be hard-working people, right, and their tax money, yeah. £8 million pounds a day, yeah. is being spent on things like four-star hotels. Yeah. And I just think it is a sheer audacity to then sit there and say, the res you know, the response to that is, we're cruel and inhumane. Michelle, oh. I understand your passion, but the if you're going to the people to get angry at are the government who have just failed to get a grip. You are really kind. I mean, this is not Christmas is over. You're being so charitable towards the government for this. They've they have overseen. It's under their watch. It's out of control. Well, you know, uh, you tell me, what do you make to it all? There'll be strong opinions out there. On both sides, I suspect, get in touch. Anyway, the Home Office have said, we work continuously uh, to ensure the needs and vulnerabilities of those residing on the vessel are met. Asylum seekers are not detained. They are free to come and go as they please. The food provided on the barge, meet, on the barge meets NHS Eat Well standards. Yeah, <laughs> I bet it does. I like and the I way bet, you actually, that. Yeah, and I bet my bottom <laughs> dollar, the food served on that they're barge, they're is a damn sight better than many people eat in their own homes. Lucky they haven't got my wife cooking for them. That's <laughs> well, lucky they haven't got me cooking for them as well, quite <laughs> frankly.